Hey, what's up? It's Johnny from Atlanta Sports Recovery. Today I'm doing a quick breakdown on an advanced metabolic report that we get from our Pinoe device. Just a little context on why I did this for myself. Uh, lately I've been feeling a little bit low energy at work, at home, uh, and so I just trying to figure out like, am I not eating enough? Am I not eating enough of the right thing? So I just decided to pop on the device, uh, take a look under the physiological hood and uh, see what was going on. And it turns out there are some things that I was messing up and some things I got to work on. So I thought this would be a really cool way of me sharing my experience. Uh, and, and then uh, a good example of how this might benefit you in your life. So uh, join me, check it out. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email at johnnyatlantasportsrecovery.com. I'd love to nerd out on this stuff with you. Here are the nine areas that we're getting data back on. We're going to take a dive into each one of these. And then at the end, we also get a very physiologically specific uh, calorie and macronutrient uh, prescription, which is really cool. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at or we get data back on is how fast your metabolism is. So if you're out there and you're one of those people that say, I have a slow metabolism, this is how we find out. We do this test. So it turns out I do not have a slow metabolism. Uh, I'm pretty fast there. Uh, I need about 2,300 calories a day just to maintain my current uh, state. So uh, good to know, um, especially if you're feeling tired like I have been. Uh, maybe you check your calories and find out you're just not eating enough every day. The second thing that we get graded on is the meta, your metabolic fitness or my metabolic fitness. And this is a score of how well I convert uh, macronutrients for energy during exercise. Um, it means it's a actually the thing that you should look at it is are you uh, well rested enough in order to tolerate high volumes of exercise I'm pretty good on here uh, I could probably sleep a little bit more and get a better number um, but this is a, a good measure for me if this was low then I would start taking some uh, look at am I sleeping enough am I using uh, the right things or maybe I need to go see my doctor and get some blood work done and there's something else going on in there um, the next piece of data we get is how well fat or carbohydrate adapted you are. So uh, how much um, of your energy is derived from fats and how much is derived from carbohydrates. Um, the more that your metabolism uses fat, the more likely it is that you have high cellular health. Um, it means that you, you're burning fat, right? We're not storing it. So uh, if we looked at somebody that was type 1 or type 2 diabetic, uh, this would be almost completely reversed. And mine's 75. I'm stoked on that. Uh, happy, happy to see that. Uh, the next thing that we get a grade on is uh, our fat burning efficiency. Um, and this is how well your body uses fat or how much uh, percentage of energy you're getting from fat during exercise. Um, and I'm in the good category here. I would like to be uh, a little, little bit uh, higher on this. So um, I'm probably going to take a look. Uh, Take a look and see why I am uh, not burning things as efficiently or burning fat as efficiently. Um, it could be a like a cellular health thing. I don't think it is because I have got blood work recently and I didn't have anything going on there. So I think uh, it's probably has more to do with me dosing my exercise. I'm probably doing too much of a certain uh, kind of exercise and it's letting my body get a little uh, overly efficient. I need to change some things up um, and make it uh, make it so I'm again like spiking or getting uh, having to use more fat for energy. Um, the next thing that we could grade on here is my heart fitness. Uh, and this is not like an EKG. This isn't telling me that I'm about to have a heart attack or that my arteries are clogged. Uh, what it is telling me is that uh, my breath is saying that my uh, my HRV in, or my breath and my HRV are saying uh, that my parasympathetic nervous system isn't um, getting activated enough. So that is our, our rest and digest pathway in our body, right? When we're sleeping, we're activated. When we're chilling, we should be activated. Uh, so for me, I look at this and I'd say, crap, I got some work to do here. This means I'm probably a little bit overstressed, overstimulated, maybe even overexercised, and I need to spend some more time on my recovery getting into that uh, rest and digest pathway. Um, so practically, I will try to get into ice bath a little bit more. 
Uh, I'll try to hit some down regulatory breathing exercises before bed to try and make me sleep sooner. I'll put my dogs in their crate at night so they're not sleeping in the bed, moving around, keeping me awake. Uh, try to make sure I get off my phone and my devices um, 30 minutes before bed and do some more reading uh, to kind of let make sure my brain is is clicking that switch out of rest uh, out of the fight or flight. I think also I'll probably uh, take a look at my phone usage and see if I'm spending a little bit too much time being overstimulated with the social media and stuff like that. Um, and hopefully I can make some just minor tweaks to my lifestyle as going on and I can see uh, this number creep towards that good. That will be a, a huge goal or huge takeaway for me. Uh, next area we get data back on or get graded on is our lung fitness or my lung fitness. Uh, mine is good. I would like it to be a little better. I am, do a lot of endurance sports. Uh, so I'd like to see my tidal volume or how well or how big my lungs can expand to take air and be a little bit better. Uh, this I'm going to try and correct with some breath work. Uh, from Brian McKinsey uh, and I'll actually incorporate it into my running so I'm gonna try and run or cycle uh, and then use certain uh, breathing uh, exercises we'll call it in order to get my lungs to expand bigger and then try to get my body more uh, efficient of using that oxygen uh, again this is not urgent but I would like to see that number go up to 85 that's my dog, Far, but uh, he's awesome, and he's super stoked our neighbor's dogs are outside. Next thing is uh, breathing and cognition, and this is how well I do at thinking when I don't have a lot of oxygen in my body, and I suck at it, uh, and I've always kind of sucked at it. If second you start taking O2 away from me, I start freaking out. Um, I've spent a lot of time uh, in my athletic life trying to work on this, and I still need to work on it. Um, I am probably going to try and use some more breath work, uh, and not breath work and laying on the floor getting yogi. I mean getting on the assault bike with restricted, uh, with an oxygen restriction mask on, uh, and then actually trying to do some complex math problems in order to get better at this. So I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is how you get better. You take O2 away from yourself uh, and then try to get better at um, cognition while you're doing it. So uh, interesting here, 15% of the population chronically hyperventilates or breathes too much. Um, so that uh, uh, can increase your risk for heart attacks, anxiety, things like that. Uh, next is breathing and posture. And this is an indicator of uh, how well you're maintaining your posture when you have low oxygen in your body. If you do CrossFit, this is super important um, because it can be an indicator that you're uh, more likely to get a back injury during like deadlifts like a, a workout like Diane, where you have like fast deadlifts, uh, you're out of breath, and you're unable to maintain the posture. Um, your coaches could probably actually already see this already, but uh, you know it's another kind of reinforcement of this. So for me, my practical takeaway is that I'm gonna start doing some bike intervals, and then trying to do start with some isometrics like sandbag carries in order to improve that. So I would love to see this number get higher. I love CrossFit, uh, but I do not want to be injured from it. So I gotta get better at being able to maintain um, position in my spine while I am out of breath. Last thing we get is a, a diabetes risk assessment. I'm very low, which I'm happy about. I'd obviously like that to be zero, uh, but it's okay. I'll take 20%. So um, this is type two diabetes, not type one diabetes. If you don't know the difference, type one diabetes is a genetic thing. Somebody uh, gave that to you. Uh, type two is a disease you've given yourself by lifestyle choices and it is reversible. So uh, just a little bit of FYI if you don't know. Next thing that we get is our very specific uh, uh, caloric um, prescription here. Uh, I, if I wanted to maintain my weight, these are the amount of calories I need on days uh, that I'm exercising. If I wanted to gain weight, that's how many calories. But a lot of times people are shocked because they've always thought like, well, I just need, you know, my the, the government says that I need 1,500 calories a day, and it turns out that they need you know 2,100 just to maintain their weight, uh, and they're you know uh, sacrificing physiology elsewhere um, because they're not eating enough, and that's actually the number one thing we see. And then the number two is if somebody wants to lose weight, a lot of times they're uh, shocked to learn how many calories they're actually eating versus what it takes to lose weight. So uh, just. Uh, 
interesting there. And then what I think is the most important uh, piece of this, if you're doing it for nutrition reasons, is this very physiologically specific macronutrient ratio. So your proteins, fats, and carbs. There are so many coaches out there prescribing this with total bullshit mechanisms. Uh, they're using a calculator online. They're using some algorithm that they got on a weekend course that they took. But at the end of the day, it's a, not a terrible starting point, but it is not physiologically specific. And a perfect example of this is for years I've viewed this, this app. It's called the RP Diet app. Uh, and you, you put in a bunch of stuff into it and then it gives you a... a uh, macronutrient prescription based on a goal and forever I've been trying to get almost 40% of my calories from protein and it turns out for my physiology in order to be good at being me I only need 20% of my calories to come from protein so that could be a huge reason of why I felt like crap for so long is I'm just eating too much protein and not getting enough like say carbohydrates uh, that 45% of my calories should be coming from carbs um, and that means fruits vegetables uh, seeds, um, and healthy grains. So uh, big takeaway for me, big eye-opening experience to find out that uh, some of these things that I've kind of put a, a high amount of trust in in the past may be very, very, very inaccurate compared to what's actually going on inside my body. And the other part of this is it can change over time too based on what you're doing. So if I uh, uh, started doing like powerlifting like seriously, maybe uh, maybe my body would be a different demand, so I'd come and take another test and see where, where what I kind of needed there. But uh, right now, where I'm at in my life, that is my my physiological macronutrient needs, uh, just in order to sustain my current body weight. So. Uh, pretty very very cool information uh, especially if you've had some brainwashing from things like keto or paleo in the past that may be fad diets um, that are effective but again maybe not be physiologically specific so uh, I would encourage every single one of you that's out there to take this test um, it is a lot of great information especially if you care about uh, your body and taking care of it and getting physiologically specific for what's going on underneath the hood of yourself um, a l so much of our information out there is is good uh, but it is not specific to you and the more specific we get the better results we get so uh, I hope this helps you understand the value of a, a, an AMR and if you've never seen one before uh, this is some pretty cool data uh, it is uh, it is a next level if uh, you care about your body so if you're interested in checking it out, you can email me at Johnny at Atlanta Sports Recovery. You can also email Mohammed, our nutritionist, at nutrition at Atlanta Sports Recovery .com. We both do these tests. Um, and then we can also talk to you a little bit more if you need some help in the coaching department with your food. So uh, have a wonderful weekend. I Thanks for taking the time. Bye.